The other day while I was working on the window grill project, I realized I had a need for a tool that would get in here and support this part of the little leaf scroll element while I forge it in this direction. And the thing I thought of first was simply a bridge tool for use at the anvil. Unfortunately, this does not actually fit in my bridge tool and I would need to make another bridge tool. So I thought I'd take a different approach and make an anvil stake or a bickern with a thin flat heel on it that will fit in there. Someday I would like to make a tool like this that would be all done traditionally, forge welded, but I think there's gonna be some trial and error and some experimenting there to figure out exactly what kind of a forge weld I wanna set up and how to pull that weld off, whether I do some sort of mortise and tenon, a cleft weld or some sort of a T-weld. Lots of different options there for that. So instead of messing with all that, doing all the experimenting and test pieces on that, because I really want to get back to work on this project, I thought I would just go ahead and fabricate this tool. So I'm going to start with a piece of inch and a quarter square bar that will fit my anvil. This is just mild steel. Then I have a piece of inch and a quarter square 4140 that will actually be the working part of this stake. And I'm going to leave two inches untouched. One end will get drawn out to the flat parallel tail of the stake. The other end will be a round horn, which is fairly typical. And then I'm just gonna weld on a collar. I've beveled these little pieces a half inch square bar so I can get a good weld on the underside without having a big weld bead there that's gonna affect this in my hardy hole. And these will just go around there like that. And I'll weld in the corners to make sure I get a good weld all the way around. And I'll weld the top and then I'll grind that to make a nice transition. The first thing I want to do then is upset the top of this bar and get it to flare out a little bit in one dimension. In the other dimension, I'm going to keep it inch and a quarter, so it'll just be a, a flare at the top that will blend better with this piece of 4140. Then I'll turn it around. I'm going to put a little bit of a point on the other end so I could use it as a stump anvil if I wanted to. But I'm going to leave most of the hardy shank inch and a quarter square so it fits better the hardy hole of the anvil. So let's light the forge and start with that upset. It's bouncy. The only problem with the hydraulic press is it wants to upset it further back down and I don't want it upset more down here, I want it more upset at the end. But it did give me a good start. Just a little bit more to go there. Now this would have been a great project for the new induction forge, but unfortunately the inch and a quarter bar is the absolute maximum that I would be able to get in the biggest coil I currently have. And once you start to upset it, it doesn't fit anymore. So I'm going to do this in the gas forge that gets this tool done, serviceable. Then when I get around to making more coils for the induction forge, I'll make a coil big enough for this size work, just in case I need it in the future.
Now I have to warn all you power hammer haters, I'm definitely going to be using the power hammer for this project. Lots of straightening. Luckily I'm going to grind the top of this considerably to put a good bevel on it to weld. It's thickened up a little too much. It's almost exactly the right width. Next I'll go to the piece of 4140 and I'm going to start with the parallel taper that will be the heel of the stake.
Now the way that end is drawing out makes me think that that may be an interesting decorative stamp, but that's an idea I'll have to explore at another time. They're going to be about the same length, which is just what I was hoping for. I think now I'm just going to try and straighten it out a little bit. I'm going to bring this up to heat one last time, bury it vermiculite so it can slow cool and anneal overnight. Then it'll be a little bit easier to grind and I won't wear out as many grinding belts, getting this to the exact shape I want. But while that cools, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. You know, over the last year, life has looked a little bit different. Things like in-person classes, seminars, workshops have all been canceled. Likewise, we haven't been going out to eat and dining in. We get takeout. Tonight is taco night, so pardon me if I get back into my current Skillshare class on YouTube storytelling and have a few tacos while I learn something. When a camera pans or tilts or zooms, it's very easy to make that look amateurish. Here's how to avoid that. Skillshare also has classes on things like creating a brand for your business. If you're in a creative business like blacksmithing and need to set up a brand or a website, or if you need to do simple product photography, there are many classes on that subject. Skillshare premium membership costs less than $10 per month. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click on the link in the video description will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership. But for now, it's the next morning, and let's get back to our project. It's been in the vermiculite overnight. Should be cool by now. So this is the big part, or the working end of this. And it's going to get welded to this. There'll be a lot of grinding to do to get everything ready and get it all just the way I want it. And I think I'm going to cut the ends off first. This is a little ragged and this one's got this really weird pucker going on that I thought was kind of interesting. But I'm going to cut that off. We're going to grind it, get it pretty well cleaned up. I'll probably grind it one more time after it's all welded to clean up the weld and to get rid of any weld splatter on the tool itself. Here are our two main pieces for the stake, and now this needs to be welded to that. I've really beveled this off heavily so I can get a good deep penetration weld. 
And I'm going to go ahead and tack it with the MIG welder, adjust it, make sure everything's straight and squared and where I want it. Then I'm going to finish welding it up with a stick welder because I think I can get deeper penetration welds with a stick welder than I can with a MIG welder. And I'll just work very methodically. I'll go side to side, top to bottom, front to back, whatever, and work around, clean the welds up after every pass, and try to do my absolute best job with this. But I am not a professional welder. I don't do a lot of welding in the shop because I prefer to do things the way a blacksmith would most of the time. So I'm not going to show any of the welding process. If you want to learn how to do electric welding, you're going to have to learn that from somebody other than me. So I'll meet you back here when I'm through welding and see what I've got before I grind it again. This is all tack welded together with all the pieces right where I want them. The next thing I want to do is preheat this because the dissimilar metals between the 4140 and the mild steel don't always weld that well and when welding to tool steels it's better to preheat it. It doesn't have to be red hot, just good and hot. And it fits in my gas forge, which was one of my design criteria for this, is to make sure I can get it back in the forge to do proper normalizing and might have to harden it in here. I don't know if it'll fit in the heat treat oven or not. Well, this is the kind of thing that makes me think maybe forge welding would have been faster. It's been a lot of welding and chipping and a little grinding and some wire brushing and little bit of straightening, I had to bring it back up to heat and forge it to straighten some warpage and some misalignments up. But I think it's coming out pretty well. The weld is definitely proud of what I want in the long run, so I've got something I can grind down, make it all flush, and hopefully there's no voids or porosities in the weld. Certainly is going to be a useful tool, but with the time I've gotten this so far, I'm not sure that forge welding it might not have been a little bit faster. But I brought this back up to heat again so it can normalize, de-stress, relax all those weld seams. Between the 4140, the mild steel, and whatever the welding rod is, that's three different kinds of material here that are all trying to blend in one space. So I think de-stressing it at this point is pretty darn important. So once again, I'm going to let this sit overnight. i got some other things I need to go do. In the morning we'll do the last grinding, take a look at the welds, fix anything that needs to be fixed then it will be hardening and tempering. But for you, it's just gonna be a few seconds. Well, we're on to day three of this project now. Not really taking full days by any means, but every time I heat it up to anneal or normalize, I just go ahead and do something else the rest of the day and come back to it the next day. So now the time has come to clean up these really ugly welds. Told you, I'm a guy that owns a welder. That doesn't make me a welder. So a lot of grinding gonna go on here and I'm gonna get this cleaned up and hopefully it'll look pretty good when we're done. Now I had just mentioned that I kind of wish I had gone ahead and forge welded this because I think it might not be all that much more work than what I'm going through welding and grinding and all that kind of stuff. And last night after I left the shop, I was watching some YouTube videos myself and I stumbled across some videos from Doc's Hot Shop where he's making a very similar tool. Only he's using wrought iron bars that are not big enough to make this tool, so he has had to laminate all of that wrought iron together to make a much bigger mass of material for both the shank and for the head of the tool. And then he forge welded the head of the tool onto that shank. So he's really putting me to shame there. He's going through a lot of extra work. Of course, he has made quite a few videos on the subject so far, and I will link to his playlist on his project up here well worth going to watch. It's a lot of work, but he's making a pretty good looking tool, and I think in the long run, he's gonna have something to be really proud of. But I'm not gonna give up on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. I think it's gonna be a perfectly usable tool. It's gonna to look pretty good, but in the back of my mind, I'm always gonna wish I had taken the time to do it a more traditional way and forge weld it up. So one of these days, we'll look at doing that and make something else, maybe not the exact same shape head, but whatever I need at the time. We'll make another one. Anyways, for now, it's back to the grinder.
So I've got my touch mark on it now, and I'm going to go ahead and let it normalize one more time, make sure it's good and stress-free. Then it will be on to hardening and tempering. This just barely fits in the electronic oven. That'll be the best way to do it. So that's what we're going to do as soon as this cools. We'll be right back to that. I think I'll go take a lunch break. We should be able to do that this afternoon. I've had this in the heat treat oven now for a couple of hours. I brought it up slowly to 1200 degrees, which is a good soak temperature. Let it soak for 20 minutes at 1200, then brought it up slowly to 1570, which is the appropriate hardening temperature for 4140. And I have this set to soak at 1570 for 20 minutes, but it shuts off at 20 minutes. So I want to make sure that I get it quenched before it actually shuts off. So 18, 19 minutes, something like that. I don't think that exact soak time is all that critical. Now there's no doubt whatsoever that this is going to flare and smoke a lot. This is a big piece of steel and my five gallon bucket of oil probably isn't really as big as I would like to have for this, but it's the best I've got. So I've got this sitting outside in the snow where it'll be a little safer and hopefully the smoke will stay outside. The wind has kind of been blowing this direction, so hopefully it'll keep pushing the smoke away from the shop instead of back into the shop. Okay, we've given this enough time. I'll try to step out of your way. I'm going to work it up and down in the bucket to make sure that it's thoroughly hardened. It didn't flare up as bad as I thought it might. Now I can't get the shank all the way down in the oil. It's not quite deep enough, so I'm just going to let it sit in here with the lid down. Especially since it's starting to blow in my face. After this cooled down enough in the oil that I wasn't worried about heat transfer from the hardy shank, I went ahead and put this in my little toaster oven. Again, it just barely fit. And then let it sit in there for an hour at 450, which is the highest that it will go. But I think that's too low for what this tool is. I really want this to be a tough tool, not a brittle tool. It doesn't need to hold an edge. I'd rather have it bend a little bit than snap off if I work on it too hard. So once the heat treat oven had cooled down enough, which was this morning, I put this in there at 700 for an hour. So that's a really good temper. 4140 can be tempered as high as 1200 degrees, according to some of the charts that I found. So I think 700 is a good mid-range. This should be a good tough tool. Hopefully it's up to the task. I still need to shine up the face a little bit just to make it pretty. Doesn't really need it that much, but I think I'll do it anyways. But all in all, I'm quite happy with it. It's the tool I thought I was going to end up with. You can certainly tell it was fabricated. There's no effort there really to hide some of that telltale sign. Even though it's ground smooth enough that it's not the first thing you see. There's no actual weld beads left showing. But you can see the little edges where the weld bead blends to the parent material. If I was a better welder, I might be able to get rid of all that, but I really don't think there's a big need for it. This is going to serve my purpose just fine, and it's a tool I will be proud to have in the shop. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out Doc's Hot Shop series of videos on his project that is similar if you want to see somebody doing it the hard way in a much more traditional manner. And don't forget that the first thousand people that use the Skillshare link in my video description get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.